Vectors are mathematical objects that possess both magnitude and direction. We often dealt with the more familiar Euclidean three-dimensional vectors, such as forces, displacement, velocity, among others. In this video, we shall extend these vectors to n dimension, and allowing the vector elements to also be complex numbers. Such higher dimension vectors are essential in quantum mechanics. For example, the quantum state of the system is represented by such vectors and they are often denoted by the symbol highlighted in yellow, called a ket. Ket is a vector which lives in a n-dimensional complex vector space. Elements from this vector space V can be added together and multiplied with a scalar, but these operations satisfy certain rules which is the subject of this video. The ket is a vector that resides in a linear vector space V. A linear vector space V consists of a set of kets, which may be added and multiplied by scalars in such a way that the operation yields only elements of V. In other words, these mathematical operations between elements of V yields a ket which also belongs to V. First, consider n-dimensional vector space V. The B ket is then a column vector of n tuples of complex numbers B1, B2 and so on, up to Bn as shown. For every B ket, there exists an element minus B ket in the vector space, which is called its inverse, such that their sum yields the null vector, which is the zero vector where all elements in the column vector is zero. The null vector is a key element of the vector space, and adding it to any ket yields the same ket, thus it is also the identity element. In order for the linear vector space to be a closed set, it needs to also obey certain rules of addition and multiplication with scalar. Vector addition of two kets, b plus c, must equal c plus b, and this is called the commutative law. Since, the addition of vector is computed by adding the respective column elements of the vectors, the commutative property of vector is just a simple consequence of the fact that addition of numbers is commutative. This commutative law can also be illustrated geometrically as shown, where the adding of vectors is done by connecting the arrow head of one vector to the arrow tail of another. The associative law states that the sum of three vectors does not depend on which pair of vectors are being added first. You can add the A and B kets first, then C, or alternatively, add the B and C kets, then A. This can best be illustrated also geometrically as shown, by thinking of them as displacement vectors. It does not matter which order you take these displacements, the end point will have the same displacement with respect to the starting point. A vector multiplied by a scalar alpha is defined by multiplying each elements of the column vector with alpha. One can then show that the scalar multiplication has to be distributive such that the results are the same if you do the vector addition first then multiplying with alpha, or multiplying each vectors by alpha then do the addition. The associate rule of the scalar multiplication is also obvious, as shown. In summary, we have introduced the rules of addition of vector, and their multiplication with scalar. The concept of vector spaces is fundamental for linear algebra, together with the concept of matrix, which allows computing in vector spaces, which we will introduce in the other videos in this series.